Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Hey everyone, my name is Chris Anderson. Dr. Noe Alvarez and his team are working on using nanotubes, tiny tubes made of carbon atoms, to create electric implants that can control your body. Wild? Yes, but it's also science. Let's take a trip over to his lab and learn more. Hey, Noe. Good to see you. Good to see you too, man. Thanks for inviting me to your lab. My pleasure. So, what are nanotubes? Uh, it's I can spend uh, days talking to you about nanotubes. Sure. That's <laughs> what I'm passionate about. That's what you love, man. Exactly. So, um, nanotubes basically are has been told like the perfect structure made by humans. Perfect okay? structure made by humans. So, imagine the carbon atoms are just like a little spheres that in the process of synthesis, we accommodate it in this hexagonal ring structure. Okay. And when you have them all bonded together, and then this goes, keeps going on, and the whole tubule is actually made of benzene rings. Okay. So it blocks the, each block dot in here will be a carbon atom, and they're all, blo all uh, glued together, bonded together, and that's actually way made out of nanotube. So this has nothing else except carbon atoms. Oh, so it's just carbon atoms. Just carbon. And they're all in these hexagon exactly. kind of orientations, That's, all bonded together. They are all joined together. Okay, and then it just keeps going on and on and on. And this tubule can grow as long as, if, if this is the real tube, the, for us, if you look at it actually, the, the, if you can say take the ratios of the real nanotube that we make in the lab, to this dimension, this will be probably as long as from here to Dayton. So that's, oh, wow. that's how long they are. They are extremely thin, but they are also very long. So why carbon for these nanotubes? Why can't we make nanotubes out of, say, oxygen or nitrogen oh. or anything like that? Carbon-carbon bond is one of the strongest bonds that you can have in nature. That's why diamond exists. You know, diamond, it's all carbon. It's just carbon. It's just carbon, but it's sp3 carbon, while with the nanotubes, about sp2 carbon. So it's the, the way they arrange the carbon atoms is different in both cases. But also, because they are all made out of carbon, we see the potential of applications in bio-related, like bio-implants, biomedical implants, okay. interactions with neurons. Well, can you show me a little of the work you guys be doing with the bio-implants? Of course. Yeah. Just follow me. All right. Let's check it out. All right. We're gonna see. We're gonna see how you're gonna control muscle movement. That's right. Okay. All right. So, Chetan, you tell tell me a little bit how this works before you, before you start controlling my muscles. <laughs> okay. So today, what we are going to do is uh, we are going to this human-human interface device. Okay. So we are going to uh, make contact with your body using these metal electrodes. Okay. So they are capable of capturing electrical energy in your body, like when you make a fist. Okay, so like, like the electrical energy, your nerves. Yes, that's correct. Out. Okay. And we are going to deliver that electrical message to this device. Okay. And then we are going to connect to another person and where this electrical energy is passed through okay. the device and let the other person feel that electrical energy and make a movement. So that it'll 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 make a movement based on what somebody else's movement doing. That's right. Okay, and it's doing this through the nanotubes. Yes, we are going to use carbon nanotubes, so we can try with metal electrodes okay. and carbon nanotubes. So you will see the difference and you can, we can do that. All right, let's do it. You can make a fist. Okay. Oh my Let's God. See what happens. So this is not, he's moving his hand. What happened here is electrical energy produced by him is going to go through this device and then this metal electrode uh, give that energy to the nerve underneath and that controls his hand. That's crazy. Now I'm going to let him be the controller and plug these things on him. Yeah. Okay. Oh! <laughs> that was crazy. Well, no, that was 
cool. My arm is still <laughs> still <Sorry>. aching from <laughs> from being controlled. Uh, what are some of the challenges that you guys have been facing in, you know, not to, not just creating the nanotubes themselves, but in some of the applications that you've been working on? Uh, for us, uh, at this point, uh, the the most challenging part is being able to control the tubes. When we make the tubes, we would like them all be alike. It doesn't matter if they are all metallic or they are all semiconducting, but they want them all be alike because that way, you know, we can really uh, make uh, devices. We can really see their own performance. And that is kind of the, the, the main challenge that's holding carbon nanotubes. Um, but uh, at the same time, when we do these applications, we also see challenges, for instance, when it comes to bio applications, or we need to be able to make sure that these uh, nanotubes, they do the job without hurting, uh, without um, causing any side reactions. And those are, um, they might look very simple, but in reality, studying those and being able to quantify those, it's still a challenge. Well, and I'm sure making sure those nanotubes are the same with their conductivity and their diameter and their, you know, their potential length, that's gotta be a big challenge, but the reward could be really good because if they're all the same, I'm sure that makes man, like, scaling up and doing these all these cool applications a lot easier yes so uh, when I started nanotubes just to tell you the story when I went to graduate school uh, people were hard they have a hard time to make a one gram of nanotube um, we are talking about 15 years so by now um, especially not only in the US China and other Asian countries they can make tons of nanotubes by now you might not be aware that nanotubes are already in the market in multiple products like coatings they are available there are also uh, batteries and energy storage they use nanotubes inside even though the nanotubes they are used is still a very poor quality of tubes but they do better job than the other materials well this is really exciting I'm, I'm uh, can't wait to see what other cool stuff that you guys come up with in your lab so no I just want to thank you for inviting me down here and showing me all this cool stuff and you know turning me into a guinea pig for a little bit <laughs> it was really fun it's my pleasure we'll love to have you again we'll we'll keep uh, working and uh, i'm sure we're going to have updates and you guys are welcome always awesome and thank you for watching and we'll see you next time on science around sensei Go in here. let's hope <sighs> Uh, I, I just realized I have this on top of my head and that looks really weird. So we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna cut. Let's cut let's cut there.